Hello all students of Tudor England and Shakespeare, this is Mr C and today we're going to have a walk through Southwark to look at sites associated with William Shakespeare and Shakespearean Tudor and Stuart London, specifically south of the river, away from the city of London to see what life was like. Behind me is the Globe Theatre, not the original site of the Globe Theatre, the original site of the Globe Theatre is 250 metres that way. Here, but This one was built in 1997 but it was built in the, the Wattle and Daub style, the exact same dimensions and style as it was for Tudor England, and you can get a relatively good Tudor experience from this. We're gonna have a little look to see how London was, what London was like and how Shakespeare lived in it. So let's give it a go. Now, unfortunately, very little remains of Shakespeare's London, but we try and, try and get a little bit of a feel and London at the time, especially this part, the south of the city, was a place of higgledy piggledy lanes and not very nice sanitary conditions, buildings toppled on top of each other. And actually, if you just go down from the uh, new site of the Globe Theatre, you can get to see Cardinal Place. This is Cardinal Cap Alley here and there's just a little bit of an example of what the alleys would have been like. This has pretty much stayed the same in terms of the map. Buildings have changed, etc of the time, but with the cobbly streets and dark alleys, this is what Shakespeare Southwark was like. Just down the river from the Globe Theatre is our first site of, which is, shows an interesting part of what Shakespearean London would be. This is the river, just to, to the side there, and there was London Bridge, of course, which you could walk across, but you had to pay to go across London Bridge. So what entrepreneurial people did is for a le lower price, you could get a dodgy and slightly dangerous ferry across. And so what would happen is uh, just here, just down on the South Bank is what was known as the ferryman's seat. A ferryman would sit there waiting for people to come by from the theatres, from the bear pits, or where all the drinking establishments here in Southwark and need to get it back across to the city of London. So he would sit there waiting for that to happen. Somebody might come along drunk and say, ah, ferryman, I need my ferry across London now. So having sat there all day, he would go to the river or go to call over. If the boat was on the other side, he'd wave a flag or, or make a noise or whatever. Or if the ferry was actually here, he'd pull a rope and he would sail the people across. But it's just sort of hidden here next to a restaurant and in a rather new building. This old, rather ancient, really, seat that a ferry man could sit on. It's not quite big enough for me, I don't think. Just by the replica of Francis Drake's Golden Hind is another example of a ferry crossing. This is the uh, legend of John Overs, who ran a ferry here, much like the one we saw at Ferryman's Seat. But there's an interesting story that tells here, the river's just back there. He was a notorious miser, didn't like to spend any money. And one day he came up with a plan to save money. He would fake his own death so that the, he felt that his servants and everyone in his household would be so distraught, they would fast, they wouldn't eat for a day, and therefore he would save money, a day's provisions. However, because he was so hated by his servants, when they found out that he was dead, instead of fasting, they held a huge party and spent lots of his money on food and drink, etc. He was so angry that he jumped out of his coffin to tell them off. They were so scared, his servants, of this man suddenly emerging from the coffin, that they attacked him with one of the oars from the rowing boat from the ferry and killed him there and out because they thought it was the devil rising again. So perhaps he learned his lesson there. It gets a bit sadder though because his daughter, Mary, was quite distraught by this and um, he, she believed that, well, she believed that his father, her father was dead. He then came back to uh, life, but of course he died once again. So he sent, she sent for her lover to come and help her collect the inheritance she was due. However, he fell on his way over here. Her lover fell off his horse and broke his neck and she died of grief. So actually this rather silly tale has quite a tragic ending, but just another example of all the ferries that were here uh, during Shakespeare's time. Just down the way uh, from there is what remains of the Palace of Winchester, not Winchester down in Hampshire, but this was the Palace of the Bishop of Winchester and he is the man who had jurisdiction over this area. Now, we were just in the Bear Gardens, and I was telling you how Southwark, this area, 
was a den of iniquity. It was outside of the city walls of London and there was a bit of an anything goes attitude. Indeed, it was called the Liberty of the Clink, the Clink Prison just down there, which we'll go to in a moment, because this area was run by the man who lived in this palace, the Bishop of Winchester. Now, he was meant to be a pious religious figure, but invariably he was anything but. He allowed the depravity of theatre and drinking establishments and, and bear fights and fireworks and all that sort of stuff, but actually also he did uh, he also allowed worse things, specifically prostitution. And uh, they, the prostitutes in this area were known as the Winchester geese because, uh, because in fact, unfortunately, they carried sexual diseases which gave you goosebumps, which is why they're called Winchester geese, uh, named after the Bishop of Winchester, Winchester. But he resided here, and this is what's left of that palace, which would have um, dominated Shakespeare's time. Now a bit of a cheesy tourist site, but this is the, where the site of the notorious Clink Prison, which was run by the Bishop of Winchester, and in Shakespeare's time it was a notorious prison with uh, the worst criminals and the worst conditions, and I think even now, as you walk along Southwark in this rather recherche sort of area with new developments, it still has a sort of sinister sense of uh, a den of iniquity. But just down from it is a mural to the very man we're talking about, William Shakespeare. This is the original site of the Globe Theatre, a few streets away from the new part and behind these new buildings that are being built as we speak, where the river is. Well, and this is where the original Globe was. It only stood for about 50 years. It was built in 1599 by the Lord Chamberlain's men, of which William Shakespeare was a major part of. Uh, and it was burnt down, actually, in 1613 from a stray of light from a cannon during a performance of Henry VIII, speedily rebuilt again in 1616. But by the 1640s, and the Oliver Cromwell and the English Civil War and the Puritans, etc., don't like any of that uh, dressing up and theatre stuff, they tore it down again. Um, you can just see on the ground there where the remnants of where they think it might have possibly been, and these buildings have been built on top of it. Interestingly as well, it's recorded in a few places that Shakespeare lived in a house that was attached to the Globe Theatre, so perhaps somewhere around here was Shakespeare's main London home. But during that time, the 1599-1613, this really is the height of Shakespeare, and on this site the Globe Theatre would have seen the first ever performances of King Lear, Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, some of those real, real classics of uh, Shakespeare took place here at the original site of the Globe Theatre. I've just come down from the original site of the Globe Theatre, which was there, uh, just a few metres away to this rather un-Shakespearean looking building behind me, but with some interesting images, because this is the site of the Rose Theatre, which was built in 1587. And actually, the first, when uh, Shakespeare first came to London, the first documentation of a play written by him being performed was in 1592 in the Rose Theatre. So here was the site of Shakespeare's first plays. It wasn't until later that he used the Globe Theatre over there as the Lord Chamberlain's men to perform his plays. But he started off here at the Rose Theatre. I'm standing in Middle Temple, one of the inns at court, in the legal part of London near Temple Tube Station, and specifically behind me is Middle Temple Hall. I'm across the river from Southwark, the main area where Shakespeare's sites are, because I've come here because it's recorded in the diary of a trainee barrister called John Manningham on the 2nd of February 1602 that he went along to see a play called The Twelfth Night, starring and written by a William Shakespeare in this very hall. This hall was standing, um, has survived the great fires, it survived the blitz. It would have looked ra remarkably similar to this. You can go inside, I think, on certain occasions. Hard for me to do at the moment, unfortunately. But it is amazing that we actually know that Shakespeare stood in that room and perhaps walked around here. And it's one of the few tangible sites that we have. Now I've just dived down one of the alleys from the river to an alley called Bear Gardens. 
and actually it carries its name from something from Elizabethan times, from Shakespearean's time, which was the Bear Pit. There was here uh, an entertainment venue where you could watch bears and other animals tearing lumps out of each other and fighting each other. It was, of course, different times. Now, this is an interesting part because Southwark, where we are, across, is across the river from the city of London. You can just see behind me there, just behind me, is the, city, the river and the city of London. And so there was an anything goes attitude here, including watching bears and other animals fight each other. And indeed, Samuel Pepys came here in, um, a bit later after Shakespearean times and said uh, it was a, a sort of a fun affair here, essentially, where he would watch these things happen. So this is just an example of how Southwark was a place of entertainment, a place of rowdiness, just the type of place for Shakespeare and his plays to thrive. So there you go, Shakespeare's Southwark, Shakespeare's London. I hope you got a bit of a feel as to what it would have been like and how um, it would have been for Shakespeare. There's so much, so little information we have, but it's, we, I think you can get a good taste of it. So do come along to Southwark to have a look at Shakespeare's London.